Hello and welcome to History Time. Today I am going to take you to a little known building, a public library and a reading room in Sindhadripet, the Goshen Library. Let us explore and see what is the history behind this structure. In recent times, there was a news item that the Tamil novelist Prabha has written a work of fiction with the Goshen Library as the epicenter of much of the action. I was delighted to get to know about it. I have not yet read the novel and I look forward to doing so. But in the meantime, I really welcome such an initiative. All over the world, it is a common practice for novelists to have various important heritage buildings in their cities as the center of action in their works. I don't think this has happened so far in Chennai and I think Prabhas is probably the first such in this direction. May there be more to come. In the meantime, what is so special about this Goshen Library? It is located in Sindhadripet, which by itself is a very historic locality of this city. It is a public library and a reading room built in the classical style that was so favored by the British in the early years of the 20th century. When you enter, you find four tall pillars on top of which there is an entablature and on top of which there is a triangular pediment. This bears the legend Vijay Raghavalu Chetty Hall and Goshen Library. And what is the story behind these two names? Prior to that, we need to perhaps look to see what is the story behind public libraries and reading rooms in Chennai city. By the 1880s, there was a reasonable number of people who wanted to read newspapers and magazines, and they did not have access to them. Perhaps the first such reading library to come into existence was at Komalishwaran Pet, endowed by the well-known Dubash and philanthropist Raja Sir Savalai Ramaswamy Mudaliyar, who was Dubash or interpreter to D.D. Dimes and Company. He created that reading room in 1887 to coincide with the Golden Jubilee of Queen Victoria's reign. And thereafter, a few other reading rooms came up in various parts of the city. In 1925, the Corporation of Madras took a landmark decision, and that was that every district or every ward in the city would have a reading room, which is when Divan Bahadur Vijay Raghavalu Chetty comes into action in Chindadripet. He was evidently a resident of this area and began his work, which was in engineering construction. He was a contractor sometime in the early 1900s. He became registered with the PWD, won tenders and put up some important buildings in the city. We know for sure about two of them. One of them is the court of small causes inside the High Court of Madras campus. The other was the old Harbour Port Trust building, which does not exist any longer. Vijay Raghavalu Chetty became wealthy enough for the government to recognize his services and endow on him the title of Divan Bahadur. In 1926, the foundation stone of this Vijay Raghavalu Chetty Hall in Sindhadripet was laid by Sir Thomas Moyer, who was then the revenue member of the Governor's Executive Council, Madras. And in the next couple of years, the building was completed. It was dedicated in the name of the then Governor of Madras, Lord Goshen, and around 15,000 books came to be housed in it. It was a place where the public of Sindhadripet went to read. Thereafter, it was also used for public events. In the 1940s, having come under the Corporation of Madras, the then commissioner, J.P.L. Shenoy, thought of giving other roles and functions to this building. He envisaged that it should become a museum for machinery. You must remember that this was the time when much of Madras city was getting its industries and factories. And Shenoy thought that this would be a good place where the school going children of the city would be able to come and familiarize themselves with how mechanics really worked or machines really worked. Sadly, nothing came of that idea. And over the years, the Goshen Library or the Vijay Raghavalu Chetty Hall went into decline. 
Today, it seems to be a building that could do with a lot more maintenance than what has been done to it. Hopefully, Prabha's novel will bring sufficient interest and there will be a public cry for the restoration of this building. And maybe then the corporation will take action. Let us hope for the best.